Okay, my YouTube people. This video is about checking piston clearance and ring end gap. Both very important when you're setting your engine up. If you're buying pistons and cylinders from the aftermarket, you should check these. When I speak with John from John Cycles, he said many a times that he's seen where people buy sets from aftermarket manufacturers and the clearances aren't right. So you should definitely check them. Now these were all done by John and he reassures me that they're right. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to show you how to check the piston and the cylinder cylinder and then we'll set up ring end gap. The Harley manual says the piston to cylinder fitment should be seven and a half ten thousandths up to 1.75 thousandths of an inch. With these Keith black pistons it says if you're running hyper eutectic pistons which I am and they're under four inches aluminum cylinder with steel sleeve it should be one and a half thousandths minimum piston to wall clearance. John normally sets them up a half thousandths over what they recommend, and I've always been successful with his recommendations. There's three ways of checking the cylinder bore. The best way by far is the dial bore gauge, and that dial bore gauge sticks down in here. You rock it back and forth after it's set up, and the gauge on the bore moves back and forth, and you can see exactly where they're at. I don't have one of those and those are expensive. The next best way to do is with a telescoping bore gauge. The way the bore gauge works is you loosen this handle and it pops out. You can stick it in the, in the bore, you can press them, they're spring loaded, put a little cock on it and then you just rock it through with a little bit of tension on it. And if it's not quite tight, you can let it back out, snug it a little bit, get it to where it goes through and it's tight. After that, you take a three to four inch micrometer and you check it. And you can see this one comes up at 3.503 thousandths of an inch. Now, as you can see, this piston's already marked. But one thing about a piston a lot of people don't know, they're actually tapered. They're narrow at the top and they're wider down here at the piston skirt. And I'm going to show you that. So at the top, this is a three to four inch mic. So three plus 475 and six thousandths. It's 3.481 at the top, 3.481. Now, if I go to the bottom, you can see that doesn't come close to fitting. So when I check it at the bottom of the skirt, it's 3.501 and a half or three 0.5015 and that's exactly what are marked on these pistons now the third way you can check cylinder size it's a little more crude but it works you put your piston down in your cylinder without your rings on it and then when you get it all the way down in you just slip a feeler gauge down in there my one and a half thousandths feeler gauge slips right down in there without a problem there's a little bit of drag now i come in with my two thousandths feeler gauge put it down and it moves up and down, but it's definitely tighter than the one and a half was. Next, I try to do the same thing with my 3000s one, and I can't hardly get it in there and nothing will move and I can't pull it out. So right there, I know it's between one and a half to two thousandths, and that's where I want it. Again, with my telescoping bore gauge, it was one and a half thousandths, and with my feeler gauge, it's two thousandths. So I know that I'm able to put this together and it's not going to seize up. Next thing we're going to do is check ring end gap. The factory Harley manual says that the compression ring gap should be seven to 20 thousandths of an inch. Seven's too close. The ring ends will butt and when they butt, they'll, they'll bow out and they'll score your cylinder real bad. You never want to put them at seven. If anything, looser's better. Don't, don't forget that Harley's specs are for Harley parts. If you're running aftermarket stuff, you want to use their specs. The Keith Black instructions say for a stock or a light bike, and you have hyper eutectic pistons, it should be six and a half thousandths per inch of cylinder bore. Now, if you're using forge pistons, it should be four thousandths per inch of cylinder bore. If you're using Weisco pistons, this is the way they tell you to set them up because Weisco is a forge piston. And in Weisco's instructions, it's four thousandths per inch. So you take your bore size and you multiply it by that six and a half thousandths per inch. The top ring end gap should be 22.75 thousandths or 23 thousandths of an inch. 
On the second ring for all the bikes, it says four thousandths per inch. So you take your bore size, you multiply it by four thousandths of an inch, and the second ring end gap should be fourteen thousandths. So now let's set up these rings to do that. So the kit come with Hastings rings, and they do make the best rings. This is all I ever use for my Harleys. The rings are clearly marked top ring, second ring, and then there's two packs of third rings. It, it's important not to get the rings mixed up. The top ring is different than the second ring. They also come with the wrist pin clips. So the way I do these is I stick them into the cylinder. You can't really use this piston because it has a dome on it and it'll put it in crooked. So if you have a stock piston, you can use that or you can use the skirt on the bottom of the piston just to kind of get it in and then check it at a few different spots. Then I'm going to take a depth mic and just check the depth to make sure it's the same all the way around. Now once you have the ring square and the bore, you want to check this gap and you check that gap with a feeler gauge. I'm going to start with ten thousandths and it fits in there very loose. Now I'll go with fifteen and 15 fits in there, no problem. Now 18, 18 fits in there, but it's getting a little snug. Now 20, and 20 doesn't quite fit in there. One way to gap the rings is take a file in here and file it down. And we're only looking to probably take like four or five thousandths off of this. The important thing if you're gonna file it, I don't know if it shows up in camera here, but you can see the end of this ring is a different material than what the ring's made out of. And that's probably because it's chromoly. So it's important to take the file this way and only cut one direction this way. You would take it in, file it, take it out, take it back in and file it. And you want to stay square as possible on these lands. You can rip this material off if you drag the file backwards. So you don't want to do that. I recently bought this tool for filing rings. Now I haven't used it yet, this will be the first time, and it was relatively inexpensive. I don't think I would have paid too much because I filed them for 40 years now and never had a problem, but decided I was going to buy this tool. So you put it in, you push, them, you push the ring forward up against these two posts, and then you just give it a little turn here. Since I'm not sure how much this tool took off, I'm going to put it back in the cylinder and check it. You want to clean your ring off and then make sure it's square in the bore and check it again. Now I know 20 didn't fit last time so I'm going to check it with 20. It fits a little further but it's not right so I'm going to take some more off. So now 20 fits in, we'll go to 21, so 21 is kind of tight, I'll cut it again. After this I'll just show you at the end what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so here's 22, 22 fits in, slides up and down, no problem, and here's 23, 23 goes in, it's a little snug, I'm going to leave it there, it's in between 22 and 23, which is right on the money. So that top ring is now gapped, I'm going to do the rest of the rings, it's the same procedure for all, it's the same procedure for all of them, I don't think you need to see it over and over. And then I'll show you putting them on the pistons. One thing I wanted to point out, I'm doing the second ring now. The second ring end gap is at 19 thousandths and I haven't touched anything. Now when I did the math, it said it should be 14 thousandths, but that says minimum second ring end gap factor is 14 thousandths. So it can be more and it's not a big deal. I obviously can't add metal back onto that ring, so the 19 is where it's at. It's something to point out, but it's not something I would get overly concerned about. I found this with just about every set of rings I've installed, that the second ring ends up 
with the gap bigger than what the spec calls for, and it's never been an issue. While I was at it, I did check the rings for the oil wipers, and they're all sitting at about 26 or 27 thousandths. I never had an instance where these were so close that I was concerned about it. So I'm just going to install all the rings next. Well, that's how you gap your piston rings. I hope this helped anybody out there that needs it. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments, throw them down in the bottom because I always try and answer everybody's comments. And have a great day.